everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Gospel Kingdom TV. My name is Pastor Hector Vidal, and you're watching Consecrated Bible Church tonight. Welcome. And uh, our sermon title tonight is, Are You With Me? Found in uh, the text I'm going to be using is 1 John chapter 3, 1 through 10. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, what happened to me in the year 2019, January, and it's been over a year. And I, as I reflected back this week, I realized how good God is. And the one thing I want to share is that uh, early part of January, I was awakened at about four o'clock in the, in the morning, getting ready to go to work. And I felt a presence of God, which is kind of hard to describe, not that you never feel the presence of God, but I felt his spirit. And I went to the restroom, and as I began to get ready for work, I heard this voice. And I'm not one to hear voices, but I heard this voice. And the voice was, was saying, are you with me? I knew it was the Lord. And he said it again, are you with me? I didn't speak out loud, but in my heart, I said, yes. And then again, I heard the voice, are you with me? And again, the voice said, are you with me? And I knew it was the Lord. What happened after that is so I saw this vision of Jesus driving. He was driving a car. I was a passenger. I don't know what kind of car it was, what kind of vehicle, but I knew it was dark. And he was holding on to the steering wheel and as we traveled to destination unknown, he would ask me, are you with me? And I said, yes, I'm with you. Looked out the windows and it was dark. I had no idea where I was going, but he kept asking, are you with me? Are you with me? Uh, with me? When I said yes for the final time, I felt overwhelming love come down. Goosebumps. And I began to cry. I was weeping loud. I usually don't do that. My wife was in bed sleeping and she woke up and she said, what's wrong? What happened? Thinking there might have been something, some tragedy and I was crying. I said, no, I just felt the overwhelming love of Jesus Christ. And I wept and wept and we prayed together it was such an amazing uh, feeling that I had, knowing that Jesus was speaking to me. And then as I reflect back to the year 2019, it wasn't an easy year. Many things were happening, both good and not so good. But now I realize why he was asking me that. And to this day, testimony is that I'm still here. And so that's what I want to tell you is that uh, I'll share a little bit more. Uh, Consecrated Bible Church has been in existence for seven years. We started out as a Bible study uh, for about five, six years, became a church. We're here in Chino, uh, California. And what happened is that we uh, began to grow and we were leasing a building and uh, we were given notice 30 days that our lease was not going to be renewed and we had 30 days to vacate. And so being a pastor and 30 days, where are we going to go? Uh, for a family, maybe it would be a lot easier, right? Okay, we'll just pack up and try to find a place. But for a church to vacate in 30 days, I told them I cannot find, uh, I, we cannot find a place for 30 days. Uh, in 30 days so extended out for for a couple of months but this is what happened is that one Saturday morning I was home worried about where is our church going to go what direction and we have one plan and, and and God has another I guess but what happened is that as I was leaving my home going over to uh, another location Sunday Saturday morning about 10 o'clock I was driving and I was going to turn left on a certain street, 
but I turned left into a supermarket parking lot. And I was so angry at myself because I did not want to go to that supermarket parking lot. And I was mad at myself because how can I be so dumb? I don't want to go here. So eventually I made the left turn and, and it ended up in, uh, in the supermarket, in the State of Brothers parking lot. So I might as well buy something since I'm here, right? And so what happened, I parked my car, I exit, and I was walking towards the store. I see a commotion over to my right side. There's a gentleman laying on the pavement and uh, by his car on the passenger side and people are around him screaming and they're trying to do CPR and they're not doing it. I had just had training a week earlier so I, I moved myself over to where the gentleman is laying there. I told him to get out of the way, I can do it. And so I began to perform CPR on this, on this heavy set Hispanic gentleman who is not breathing. And so I start doing the uh, CPR and I continue to do it. He was already turning blue. His, his mouth was already uh, gargling sound, you know. Uh, make a long story short, what happened is that finally after five or six minutes of doing the CPR, he begins to breathe. And as he's breathing, I hear the paramedics coming and they come and they take over and uh, I'm all sweaty after about 10 minutes, it seemed like an eternity, trying to do CPR on this gentleman. Uh, I go into the store, I had no idea what I was going to buy. I went to the restroom, washed up, came back out, saw the gentleman, he was being on a, he was on a gurney, and, and, and uh, paramedics thanked me for doing what I did, and, uh, and I left. I got in my car and, and went. And then I heard the Lord speak to me and said, your plan was to do your thing, go your direction. But my plan was to do something else. And when you turned left before you, the, the one street you wanted to turn left on, the, basically that was me. And what you did, you saved another person's life. And so that stuck with me. It's not but what I want, but it's what God wants for you. Sometimes when we have our, our plan, our, our, our agenda, and we think things should go a certain way, but it doesn't go the way we want, we become angry and we become uh, uh, irritated or, or it's not supposed to be this way. But God has better plans than ours. And that's life. Uh, life is not fair. So let me tell you about 2019. One thing happened is that we had our grand, grandchild. She was born February the 6th. What a joy to have a grandbaby, a beautiful uh, grandbaby daughter, uh, granddaughter. And then the church move, of course. What happened there is that we were able to find a building right on, around the other building where we're at. Uh, the last day of our other service, last service at our early, other building, we all helped move. We just picked up our chairs and brought them over here. And so that everybody participated in the move. But then tragedy began to strike. My nephew was 36 years old, passed away, leaving two children. Uh, brother was devastated. My brother was devastated. It's his son. Uh, my nephew's wife, two children, everyone was devastated. Soon after that, my brother-in-law passes away. And they were married, he was married with my sister for almost 30 years. And then after that, another brother-in-law passes away. And then my wife's nephew passes away. And tragedy after tragedy throughout this year. And then my nephew in Arizona, his wife has cancer, 42 years old, passes away, leaving three boys, 14, 11, and nine. And we ask God, why is these things happening? And I so said, what's next? Well, then I find out that my son was born, uh, burned at work burned on this left side of his arm, part of his face. 
and he was at USC Medical Center burn unit there for two weeks doing skin grafts and praise God he's he's okay but things like this happen and and then problems at the church and the, the things that happen and and this whole year it was this way 2019 and then recently I just this past week I remembered what the Lord spoke to me are you with me and see sometimes we think being a Christian oh we got it made everything's going to be great now but when we go against the resistance of the world the resistance we fight the devil he's going to attack that's why we have to be with God and we have to be with him and so we wondered, am I good enough? It's not about you being good enough, it's about God being faithful and us being faithful to him. And I'm gonna read 1 John chapter three. Uh, if you wanna to turn to your Bibles, 1 John chapter three, one through 10. And this is what the Father says. It says, see how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. We're children of God. But the people who belong to this world do not recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we would be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will be will keep themselves pure just as he is pure and then verse 4 everyone who sin is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God and you know that Jesus came to take away our sin and that there is no sin in him anyone who continues to live in him will not sin excuse me sin but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. And it goes on, verse 7. Dear children, do not let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Who has been sinning since the beginning but the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God God's life is in them so they keep they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God so now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love another believer does not belong to God. These are the words of Christ. These are the words of our Savior. See, to really understand the love of God, we have to listen to him. We have to be searching. And sometimes, like we see Paul when he was out to, uh, to persecute, remember the road to Damascus. And he was there to arrest the Christians and bring them back and maybe kill them and throw them in prison. He did not want the gospel to be spread. But see, God is greater than anything man brings against him. If you're having problems, if you have difficulties, you have trials, or maybe things aren't going your way, the question I have for you, are you with him? Just like he asked me, are you with me? He's asking us every day are you with me maybe you've been rejected by by your friends or or even your spouse or your fr family or friends the question is are you with me a lot of people are sick right now whether it's a disease an ailment flu whatever it might be and you're lying there in, the, in your bed or maybe even in the hospital bed and you're scared God is asking, are you with me? What's your answer? I'm afraid God can cast out all fear with love, right? Love casts away all fear. 
And so you have to trust in God. And so he's always asking that question, are you with me? His love is greater than what we can ever envision. The love of God is not just the love that you have between your spouse or your family or, 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 or your mom and dad or whatever. God's love is undescribable. You can't describe God's love. You can taste it. You can see it. But do you really experience the love of God? And see, that's one thing. You know, the greatest day here on earth is, is can't even be described as one day with Jesus in heaven. When we reach our final destiny to be with him, we're going to experience the love of God like we never experienced before. You know, life is a journey. As you were born, you, we had difficulties and, and, and we had good times and good things that have happened. And, and, and as you go from, from a baby into your teenage years and, and all that, you grow and you experience different things. And, and, and you wonder, how come I had to experience that pain of that and, and, and this uh, tragedy and this trial? See, with each test, it's a testimony. But you have to be with God. We see many people who have given up on God because of some tragedy in their life. And they say, forget God. Or they're angry at God for the things that they have experienced in life. But God says, wait, I come to save the world, not to condemn. And when he comes to save the world, he's saving you. Because he loves you. He could have destroyed Mankind after we sinned against him, but he couldn't. He said, I love what I created. And his, his breath does not go void. When he breathed into Adam, that's the breath, the breath of God going into mankind. And gives us a choice to follow or not to follow. It's your choice. Uh, if you want to follow Christ, that's great. But I want you to experience the love of God like you never had experienced it before. How do I do that? How do I prepare myself? Well, God can, can do it by many ways. He'll lead you to the right place. He'll lead you to the places where, oh, I don't want to go here, but you're going there. And, and things happen in your life. And, and what happens is that when you follow where God has sent you, you're going to experience joy. Uh, you know, many times we look at life like, okay, it's just another day, right? And we go to work, come back and do our thing. And, and we question, this is what life is about. The one question I have for you is, do you have hope? Well, I hope I make it to the end of the week. Or I hope I make it to the end of the month. Or I hope I make it to the end of the year. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, do you have hope? of the eternal life that God brings. Do you have great expectations of what God can do in your life? I never thought about that. Oh, I don't even know what that means. See, God does not see you in the condition you're in now. He sees you in the destiny that you can experience. See, when, when Peter was, was, was picked, Jesus did not see him as a fisherman. He saw him as, as the rock where the church is going to be built on. See, many of us have low self-esteem, thinking that, oh, I can never do that, or, or I've been told I'm unworthy, and I, can, I don't have any talents to offer God. But God says, with what you have, you can serve me. With what you have, you can be a testimony. With what you, God has given you, the talents that you have, utilize them for God. I said, well... I'm afraid God will give you hope. God will give you peace. God will give you the ability to do it. Who do you trust in life? Do you trust in your own abilities? Or do you trust in the love of God? When Jesus heals, it takes two. Like the man with the withered hand, he told him to stick out your withered hand, your deformed hand. Stand up, you did, stretch it out, and it was healed. See, it takes two people to make the process work. And so, are you with God 
Are you with him? Are you allowing him to work in your life? Are you allowing him to bless you? The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to enter a place where he's not wanted. Well, when you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life, stand by, great things are going to happen in your life. Beyond your great expectations, even greater things are going to happen. And see, this is what it means to, to have a, a fully, uh, being confident in the Lord, knowing that he can heal, knowing that he can do great things. The world says that can't happen, but God says, yes, it can. Who are you serving? Are you serving the world? Or are you serving Christ? You might be listening today and you might be uh, 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 confused of what, what am I going to do tomorrow or the next day or, or, or what does God have planned in my life? This is where we have to take time to listen to the word of God, to his voice. I was awakened that day when I heard him saying, are you with me? I could have said, you know, forget that. I don't even know who's talking to me. But I said, I knew it was God. I knew it was the Lord. And I said, yes. I kept saying yes. And yes. And yes. Why he was asking me so many times? He wanted me to say yes. And maybe I had, are you really serious? He kept asking. And I kept saying yes. 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 And by the grace of God, I stand before you. Not giving up, I'm still with God. I'm still with him. And I will never leave him because he has blessed me beyond what I, I expected. The grace of God is great. Uh, just a couple more minutes, and I'm going to show you something about grace. I had, I uh, was sitting up here in church when we have our worship team always sit up front. And I closed my eyes and I worship, and I saw this book in front of me. It was like this Bible here, but it was a book in front of me. And it was the book of my life. I knew it was about me, but I couldn't read the pages. I couldn't read what was being said. And so what happened is that as that book is in front of me, I knew it was about me, and I saw the pages being turned. I couldn't say what it was, uh, read what it was, but I knew it was about me. Then I saw blanks, like paragraphs missing of my life. And I ask, how come there's blanks in these pages? And the voice of God says, those blanks are the sins that have been erased from your life, no longer remember. That is grace. And I just broke down crying knowing that my sins are no longer remembered. Erased. Satan likes to remind you of your past. Remind him of his future. God has forgiven you. Don't dwell on the past things of you, that you have done that aren't worthy, but God has washed you by the blood of Jesus Christ. With that, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. His love is overwhelming. I want to tell you that, are you with him? Are you always, always ask yourself, am I with God today? And you're going to have the greatest experience in your life when you do that. And so I want to pray with you real quick. Father God, I just pray for those who are listening or going to listen to this program. I pray that, Lord, that they open up their heart. They ask for forgiveness and they accept you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, that they find a good Bible teaching church, Father God. And Lord, if they're nearby, let them come to, 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 uh, to uh, consecrate a Bible church here in Chino. And, and Lord, that, that we can minister to them, Father God, because you love them. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that, call me. Call me at uh, 213-448-0934. And make sure that don't let this word that I have spoken to you go void. But listen to it over and over again. And share it with your friends. Share it with your family. And so with that, I want to thank you. Also, uh, on March the 21st, there's going to be more information set out. But we're going to have a car show here on March 21st, Saturday. I invite everyone to come out. We're going to have uh, classic cars and, bike and a bike show. Uh, and we're going to have food. And so all Christian, it's a good outreach to bring others to here. God bless you. Be sure to tune in to Gospel TV for more powerful message from the Word of God. Jesus loves you. Thank you very much.